Frank Nilakina's qualifying offer, which would have made him a restricted free agent, was not picked up by the Knicks. The Knicks did not pick up the qualifying offer for Frank, so he will walk into un- into free agency uh, unrestricted. No, no claims to Frank Nilakina, and so uh, this this move was expected. The Knicks had a eighteen Nilakina carried an eighteen million dollar cap hold, and so the Knicks were not going to to keep that. What the cap hold means is that the NBA has the cap hold so that teams do not sign free agents before using the salary cap before they use their bird rights on their current free agents. So it's a way to prevent that. So basically, that eighteen million dollars is is a hold. On, on their books that they can't use that until they make a decision on Frank. Either they come to a contract agreement or um, they use his bird rights to to uh, bring him back in. So what they're likely going to do is they're going to renounce his all his rights, making him an unrestricted free agent. And if they want to bring him back, which they could, they would have to use some of the salary cap. So they would no longer be able to use his bird rights to bring him back because of the cap hold. They would have to renounce the rights and uh, bring him back using salary cap. Uh, CK, I'll, I'll start with you, man. Um, what did you think of the Frank news today and, and uh, you know, potentially that they could be parting ways? Uh, yeah, you hit it in the nail on the head. Uh, it was expected. Um, it, it's unfortunate. Obviously, a lot yeah. of us love Frank. A lot of us, you know, the Frank Hive was a, a fun meme for the last four yeah. seasons. Um, but it, it was expected because, you know, that this team's going to try to go into this free agency with as much cap as possible to put ourselves in a position to get any of these names that, you know, we're going to be talking about. I'm sure the chat's throwing names all over the place. Um, so you got to do what you got to do. Uh, it's not officially official over because you never know. Might yeah. throw some smaller deal at them if there's no interest from any other team. So it's not officially over. I don't see that happening, but it's definitely a, a possibility. But you got to do what you got to do financially and for the team. And I, I feel like that was probably, unfortunately, the right move um, for, you know, from what we've been getting from Frank. Al, how about you, man? CK hit it right on the head, CP. You know, they're tr- the Knicks are trying to go into this offseason, which is month with as with much cap space as possible. Yeah. So... Wedding go of Frank was a casualty. I mean, it wasn't a hard – it's not a hard decision for the Knicks. He wasn't their draft pick. He's been through, you know, three regimes, mm-hmm. technically three regimes. You had Phil who drafted him, even though it was the next day that you had uh, Scott Perry come in with Steve Mills. And then through that tenure, that didn't work out. They didn't really want to invest in him. And now you go through Leon Rose and uh, World Wide West era. And they're not trying to go through him either because that's not their draft pick. They're, they got other fo- they got other plays they want to focus on, especially the new guys with Quentin Grimes, Rokas, Miles, uh, Jericho yeah. Sims. So there's so many other guys that they're trying to use their resources towards. And I think just even using that much money on Frank after seeing no production didn't make sense for the team. So mm-hmm. they'll let him go, see if another team wants him. If another team wants him, give him that opportunity to go continue his career. But if none... You know, there's still that there's still that chance that he could come back. It's very slim, but there's still that chance. As yeah. you know, Mark Berman wrote in the post, you know, if we can't get Reggie Bullock, bring back Frank on a small deal to replace him as a wing three and D type of guy, that is possible. So we we don't know yet. We got to yeah. wait until tomorrow uh, or probably later this week to find out what happens to Frank. But it, it makes a lot of sense. So Frank Hive, don't give up hope, man. It's it's still some hope <laughs> for the Frank Hive. It's some some it's some some you know uh, depressed. You know, Frank Hive supporters out there, man, but don't give up hope. J- J.D., what about you, man? I mean, these guys touched a, a lot of it. Um, yeah. I think, uh, as as Alex mentioned, um, a lot of it is – it had to happen because of cap situations. Um, they're trying to save every dollar. I think for Frank, in terms of looking back, if this is, in fact, the end um, – you know, it, it, it's it's another miss, another miss for the organization. It highlights, yeah. you know, why we are in this position, right? He's one of those highlights, uh, being a lottery pick. Um, some of it, I think it's unfortunate for him because I, I don't necessarily think that there was ever like a le- legitimate plan for him. At times, he, you know, he was drafted to be a point guard in a triangle offense and then the organization made changes and he's had different coaches and different systems. And is he a point guard? Is he a wing? Is he this? And then you couple that with his own injuries. Um, I just think in any in every way you look at it, it just has not worked out. And he is a prime example of a player that just needs a fresh start. Yeah. And, you know, wherever he goes, he just has to make sure that he understands and he speaks to what plan they have for him so that he can maximize the next opportunity, because the next one 
might be his last. And so, you know, um, I think the Frank Hive, they look at that 47, 48% from three that he shot this year. And yeah. I know they're hoping that, you know, if the Knicks make a major trade and you need some salary, you know, some players to just fill up the roster, then maybe in that scenario, they bring him back on a minimum. That's the only scenario that I see it. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think, I think this is it. Well, that's the salary that he's earned. I mean, let's face it. You, you know what I mean? You know, how many different regimes now? Hornacek, Fisdale, Tibbs, and, and, and the last two who were, who were known to be defensive coaches did not use him, did not utilize him. So I, I think we have to see the writings on the wall. The, these coaches did not feel like he could be a, a guy that could contribute for major minutes and help this team. And so, unfortunately, we, we drafted him. As you said, it, it's a mark on the organization where they're now looking at the prospects of losing a prospect for nothing that you, you picked with, uh, I believe he was either the seventh or eighth pick in the draft. So, you know, this should be a lesson learned for this new regime that we got to hit on these. We, we can't make these mistakes. We got to have guys that can come in and, and make it a solid contribution. And, and while Frank did uh, in certain spots, yes, he played good defense. He could knock down the shot. Last two years, he was very proficient, especially from the corner three. You know, we saw that again this year. He shot the ball fairly well, but just overall – where Tibbs is concerned, he just didn't just didn't give Tibbs Tibbs what he needed. So if he's gonna come back, it's, it's got to be on a, a on a minimum level deal because I felt like that's what he's earned. But I think in all likelihood, you probably see in the last of Frank, and I, I I do think it's best for both sides to move on. <laughs> 